Hello and welcome to the studio. Today I'd like to talk to you about DIY arrow kits, do a little comparison test to see how well they work, and tell you about some of the downsides to building and running a fully functioning wing and splitter on your performance car. Thanks to the work of racers and amateur aerodynamicists, there is a lot of information out there about how to build cheap functional arrow kits for your car. How cheap are they? Well, we made this fully functioning rear wing by filling a plastic eBay wing with two-part polyurethane foam. It's big, it's sturdy, and in total, it costs about 150 US dollars. Considering the carbon fiber version of this wing starts at $400, that's not bad. And yes, it actually does produce downforce. This enormous splitter is made of one half inch thick plywood board. Now, this one was fabricated for me by Brian Bennett of Bennett Engineered Motorsports in Florida. But with a bit of patience and some woodworking tools, you could make this yourself at home. These quick release splitter brackets were about $75. This little lip here is a support for the air dam, and it's actually a piece of landscaping engine that's held in with bolts. The air dam itself was cut from a $20 roll of plastic sheeting. All in all, you could build this air dam and splitter for about 150 US dollars in materials. And it's quite the bargain. It's very strong, and like the wing, it produces a fair amount of downforce. So this is all well and good, it's all very cheap. But the real question is, do they make the car faster? So let's do a little side-by-side -side comparison and find out. The car on your left is the Studio VRM Racing Team's Honda Prelude Si. Its 2.3 liter H23 power unit produces 180 horsepower to the front wheels. It has race tuned suspension, competition brakes, and an SCCA roll cage. For grip, it wears meaty 245 40 R17 Hoosier R7 DOT slicks and weighs around 2,550 pounds with driver. And on your right is the Studio VRM Racing Team Honda Prelude Si. It's the same car. It's the same 180 horsepower, same race tune suspension, same 245mm wide Hoosier DOT slicks. Thanks to a lightweight hood, it also weighs the same 2,550 pounds with driver. The main difference is the car on the right is equipped with our DIY wing and budget friendly splitter. Now as far as mounting heights go, the wing is mounted so it's just shorter than the height of the roof, and the splitter is 3.5 inches off the ground. This is to comply with the rules of SCCA's Super Touring Underclass, in which this car races. As far as the track, we'll be doing today's comparison test at the Thunderbolt track at NJ Motorsports Park. Thunderbolt is perfect for this kind of comparison testing. It offers an even mix of fast straights, high speed corners, and a tight low speed section, so we can really see how the car performs in each section. So first let's compare the performance of these two cars through the low speed corners. This twisty back section here is commonly known as the octopus. It's a long decreasing radius right followed by a slow hairpin left that opens up into a series of fast S's. As you can imagine, speeds through this section are very low. The sharp 90 degree right at the end of this decreasing radius turn demands hard braking and a shift down up to third gear in most cars. Once you get through there, there's an immediate right-left transition into a long 180 degree turn, and there's very little camber. Now as you can see, there's just not much of a difference between the wingless car and the aero-equipped car. Yes, the aero-equipped car is faster through the sweeping right leading up to the 90 degree turn, but both cars are pretty much even through the rest of the octopus. This shouldn't be too much of a surprise. The Octopus is a 45 to 60 mile per hour corner, or series of corners for most cars. Most of these aftermarket aero pieces really only work above 65 or 70 miles per hour. So let's do the same comparison, but through the fast turn two through turn five complex at the Thunderbolt circuit. Turns two through five are a series of extremely fast right-handers, one after another. The slowest of these turns have a corner entry speed in the 60 to 70 mile per hour range, while the fastest can be taken well over 90 miles per hour in a well set up car.
Now this is where the splitter and wing really shine. Without our homemade splitter and wing, we would need to lift or even tap the brakes through this fast downhill turn 3. But with our DIY aero kit in place, we can go through it in top gear with the throttle planted firmly to the floor. This right hand turn 4 can be pretty scary in a wingless car. But again, with our homemade aero kit, it's just a quick stab of the brakes and immediately back up the full throttle in 5th gear. Now just to illustrate how big a difference this makes in a racing scenario, take a look at this footage from the 2019 SCCA Summer Thunder Race Weekend. This heavily modified red E30 BMW has a lot more power than us, and he can stick right with us through the slower corners. But as soon as we get to this high speed section, wow, look at that gap. And it wasn't just this corner either. We were able to pull away consistently through every high speed corner, pulling gaps on cars that had much more power or much more mechanical grip than we did. Some of our wingless competitors pushed hard to try to keep up through these high speed sections. But honestly, they were no match for the aero grip generated by our homemade winged splitter. So this all looks and sounds great, but what are the downsides? Well, there are a few. First, the obvious. All these bits sticking out of the car do tend to get in the way. Having a big unwieldy splitter sticking out of the front of your car is going to affect your ground clearance. And while this won't be a problem over the smooth, manicured surfaces of a racetrack, it's not going to work so well over bumpy roads, uneven surfaces, and definitely not over speed bumps. And watch your head when you work around the back end of a winged car. You won't believe the number of times I bang my head against these rear wing end plates while trying to change wheels or while working on the rear brakes. Another obvious problem. With aerodynamic downforce comes aerodynamic drag. And boy, do these aero elements generate a lot of drag. Take a look at this comparison of our two cars going down the main straight at Thunderbolt. The wingless car on the left reaches a significantly higher top seed and gets to the corner before the aero equipped car on the right. And that's no coincidence. Even with a torquey long stroke motor and 180 horsepower to the ground, that wing and that huge splitter really drag the car down in a straight line. However, there is a much bigger, much more serious problem that comes with installing downforce producing aerodynamic devices. More downforce means more lateral G's through every corner. More lateral G's means more load on a number of things. The tires, the suspension, the driver, and that's all to be expected. But more lateral G's also affects the oil in your engine. If these forces are high enough and they continue for long enough, a lot of the oil in your oil pan will slosh so far over that the oil pickup won't be able to get enough of it to keep the engine running. We learned this lesson in the worst way possible. We totally underestimated how many cornering G's that this arrow would generate on our Prelude race car. As a result, 10 laps into last weekend's race, the Studio VRM Prelude's oil-starved engine spun a bearing and then exploded in spectacular fashion. We later reviewed the GPS data and noticed that the car was generating a steady 1.1 Gs of cornering force through every single one of the high-speed sweepers in turns 2 through 5. Now most production engines can handle short spikes of 1 G without any issues whatsoever. But when you're sustaining 1G through the entire length of a corner, lap after lap, it's a totally different story. It's a hard lesson learned, and we'll be installing a baffled oil pan and an oil accumulator system to make sure that this won't happen again. So in conclusion, yes, DIY aero does work. You can do it on the cheap if you have some basic fabrication skills, and it will make your car substantially faster through high-speed corners. And in order to make sure that it doesn't destroy the rest of your car, you should take the money you saved and invest it into reliability upgrades for your engine, suspension, and chassis. That's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you at the track.